Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Pythonic Accountant. Today we're going to get a little bit deeper into the world of extracting data from PDF files. So we have in front of us a sample invoice by vendor list that's part of a larger PDF file but this one page has some pretty rich information that we're going to try to extract the data from. So let's see what we can do to start. Um, what we've got here is some starter code that I've borrowed from a previous video, the extracting data from PDF, which had some pretty uh, basic downloading of a PDF file and extracting some information from it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with that. I've replaced the URL with this new URL here. And then what this is going to do is now get us to the point where we are grabbing the text from that page. So let's go ahead and run this. We're downloading the file and it saves it here. And now this is acting as if we have a local file, which we do. So we're going to open up the PDF file and we want page, uh, the 15th page, which is actually page 16. But because it starts at zero, it's 15 here. And then now we're going to see what the text looks like. So this is good. It looks like we've got all the information we need uh, and we have to now figure out how to parse through it. So if you look at the original format, you can see that each new vendor section starts with a uh, three digit number followed by the name of the vendor. So what we're going to start doing here is we're going to create a regular ex what's called a regular expression to try and identify which line item looks like a new vendor line item. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a regex. Let's import regex, import re. And our regular expression, uh, let's call it a new vendor regular expression. And the way you do this is re.compile. And we're going to say we want three uh, let's see, three digits, followed by a space, followed by, uh, we want a capital letter, I think is what's next. And then dot star means anything. And let's say we want this to be at the beginning of the line only. So I think this is going to work, but in order to test it, let's, oops, let's go ahead and uh, try it out. So let's see, for line in, this is text, split new line because that's how we're going to iterate through this if new vend re dot compile or dot match line print line let's see if this works and that looks good we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten it's good to just gut check it that looks about right so now what we actually want to do is we want to split apart the no, the invoice or the vendor number in the vendor name so that way we're able to start saving this into a table that we're going to build so let's copy this and let's see instead of printing the line we're going to say vendor number and vendor name equals line dot split and that's going to give us something interesting. So we don't know how many, when we do a split, it's going to split apart the words in here by the spaces. And we want all of this combined. So if we just look at this right now, and vendor name, you'll see it's going to give us the vendor number and then a list of the vendor name. But we want that vendor name combined. So what we're going to say is vendor name equals space dot join vendor name and now if we print vendor name it's going to give us the vendor name so that's awesome so now we figured out how to get vendor number and vendor name so let's just save that for now and what we're going to do here i'll just print the last one just get it print vendor number print vendor name so oh we don't need to do it every time Let's do this. Okay, so we got the last one. Now what we want to do is we want to find which lines have the invoice information. So this gets a lot trickier because you've got some inconsistent formatting uh, of each of these lines. Some have a P, but not all of them. 
Some have a Y or an N or a space here. Some of them have a voucher number. Some of them have an invoice number. Some of them have neither. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, you know what? Let's, we don't care if there's a voucher or an invoice number. What we care is if there's a six digit number, a space, a six digit number, a space. And this is helpful. We've got a decimal here. That's always going to have a decimal followed by two digits and then space, maybe a P, maybe not. And then again, one or more digits, a decimal, one or more digits. So that's how we're going to capture these lines. So let's try this. So let's do invoice line re equals re.compile. And we want to find where there is a six digits. Uh, let's see, digit six, a space, another six digits, a space, and then we're going to look for the dollar amount. So that's going to be a zero to nine. Actually, that's going to be a digit. So a digit and it's going to be one or more digits. And actually, you know what? There is a trick here that I've noticed down here. There's a comma. And I, when I was trying to play with this before, I ran into this trouble. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to fix that. So if we don't, if we don't use the comma, it's not going to pick that line up. So instead, we're going to say we want a digit or a comma. We want one or more of those followed by a decimal followed by two digits. And this should work. Let's just stop here and see if this finds what we need. So let's just copy this for line and text dot split. If invoice line, oops, re dot match. Well, let's see, search line you can do match or search match matches the whole thing search searches for it within it then we'll say print line and that looks pretty darn good i don't know if it has everything but i i sure hope so uh, we can check later when we add up the totals of the dollars um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to try and capture the individual elements here so this is actually pretty cool um, you can use parentheses to create groups of what you're looking for so if we want to grab the first date the second date and then this amount here we've now created three groups so instead of just printing the whole line I'm gonna do a little bit different I'm gonna do uh, let's see line equals that and then if line I'm gonna print line dot group one and that should give me the first date. And oh, that didn't work. Why not? Match. Let's see. Did I do this? There we go. That is happier. So cool. That's our first date. That's our second date. And that's the dollar amount. So that's pretty cool. Now we are almost. Uh, we almost have everything. But now we want to capture maybe the second dollar amount. Maybe the description. So. This gets a little more complex, but I think we can figure it out. Um, so after we do the second, after that, we do that first dollar amount, now we've got, you know, a space and then maybe a, another space and maybe a P and, or maybe not. Uh, so we'll just do that. And then we want another number. And let's just see if we got this one working. Let's look for group four. And that looks like it works, so that's good. And uh, let's now see if we can find the description. So after this, we have maybe a, a Y or an N or a space uh, or, you know, or and then a number. So let's just do, uh, let's see, we've got a space and then maybe a Y and N and, uh, and then a space and then let's see one or more wire in then a space uh, or a space and then a number a digit then a space and then let's see if we can capture the rest just for fun so then we do 
that star. And now I think it's going to grab the stuff after, which we don't really care about. But for now, I think that's probably still fine. So let's see if we can get this to work. And that's pretty awesome. It looks like we got it. So like I said, I don't think we want the star, but eh, that one doesn't have a star. Petition for dissolution of marriage filing fee. And uh oh, you know what? Didn't look like it captured that one. So let's see if we can figure out why. Petition for dissolution of marriage filing fee. I'm not sure. Looks like we might have an issue we're going to have to figure out. So, uh, 150, 150. There's no P. So, what happens here is, oh, you know what? We've got an extra space here. So, that might be the issue. So, we were looking for things with two spaces. So, cool. So, this worked. So, now what we want to do is we want to not capture that extra space. There's always going to be a space. And then there might be an asterisk, a space, or a digit. So let's do asterisk, space, and then digit. And let's see if that gets rid of those. It doesn't. So let's see if we can then make this one uh, non-greedy. And that looks pretty good. OK. So I think we got all the groups now. So. What we're going to do here is we're going to create uh, what I, I like to use from the collections library. So from collections, import named tuple. And a named tuple allows us to create the names for each item that we're trying to capture. So let's say, let's just say invoice line equals, actually no, invoice. Let's do INV equals named tuple INV. And then we want to do the vendor name uh, number, vendor name, and then you've got a invoice date due date, invoice date due date. And you've got the uh, invoice amount net amount, invoice amount net amount, and then the description. So. What we're going to do now is for line in, so we're going to say line items equals blank vendor uh, name. Uh, actually, no, that should be fine. So line items equal blank for line and text dot splits. And then if it's a vendor, Da -da. Oops. If it's a vendor, then vendor name, vendor number, vendor name equals that. And then, uh, let's see, else line equals, that's fine. Invoice line to search line. If line, then here's the fun part. So we're going to say, let's see. Uh, da, 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 invoice date equals line dot group one and due date equals line dot group two. We've got invoice amount, net amount, line dot group three, net amount is line dot group four, and the description equals line dot group five. And then so what we're gonna do here is line items dot append invoice of the invoice date due date invoice amount net amount and description and let's see if this works so oh and we forgot the vendor number and vendor Let's see if that works. It looked like it didn't get mad at me. So let's check line items. Let's just look at the first three, maybe. That's the third one. So let's just look at the third one. So third one should be 202 Software Technology LLC. And that would be, oh, it's actually the fourth one, because 012 is these three. So Software Technology LLC, cool. 
and it should have an invoice number of, uh, well, actually we can get the invoice number, let's just say invoice date of August 20th, 2020. Yep, yep, and then invoice amount of 490. So this looks like it worked, this is pretty cool. So we're gonna turn this into a data frame. So data frame equals PD dot data frame. We're pulling the line items and df dot head. That definitely looks like it's good. And we're gonna do one quick thing before we save it to CSV. So let's convert these to actual dates. So df invoice dates equals pd dot to date time that. And we're gonna do the same thing for due date. Do 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 due date. And here again due date, and let's check df.head, that is awesome. Now we're gonna do a quick gut check of the amounts. We're gonna do uh, df.sum, let's see what GAT gives. Oh, that's not good. So our invoice amount and net amount are being treated as non-digit. So we're gonna do one last thing. So we're gonna say, uh, let's see, df invoice amount equals df invoice amount dot map and uh, x and we want a float of x dot replace and because some of those have commas we want to get rid of those commas and we're going to do the same thing for net amount and net amount df dot sum and awesome, so we don't really care about these because it's just <laughs> actually summing up the text, but if you look at these, let's see if this amount ties to the invoice. So it should be 22,476.30, and oh man, that is awesome. Looks like we're off by a penny, but I'm not worried about that. So 22,476.31 could be an error in the software. Maybe we got it right. Um, I feel good about this, so let's export this to CFV, tf.2 CSV invoice lines that CSV and then we'll take a quick look once that finishes extracting that should be right here and there you've got it this is pretty cool so uh, there you have a really nice example of how you can use um, you know a little bit of complex regular expressions this is definitely not an easier regular expression to put together but hopefully you were able to see that it's you know not, not that complex if you understand the little pieces of it. But this is how you can take a PDF file and turn something that's not in an easy to parse format. And with a little bit of regex and a little bit of happy Python coding, you can turn it into a nice CSV table. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you liked it, please click like and subscribe to the channel. And leave a comment if you have any other suggestions or want to discuss anything. Hope you have a good one and see you in the next video.